Oh, I'm recording. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Lounging with Lisa, the video series that has me lounging while coming at you with thoughts of the day. I just wrapped up my moderating gig over at Mike Rivera, and I have to tell you, it was really good today. We had a somebody I've never seen over there. His name's John, and he is super on the ball, um, not letting people get away with stuff like, oh, demonizing the word socialist or Marxist or, you know, any of that. He was just, he was very good. Um... Had a lot of things to say that were on target, like Mike shouldn't really be uh, Mike should really be pointing out every day how we are imperialist and stuff, which Mike actually does. I that's one of the reasons I like him. But of course, I do see a change now. You know, this happened when I joined Tom Hartman. I think I'm bad luck for any show because when I joined, I think prior to joining Tom Hartman, or he used to be known as this uh, number one progressive talk show host in the U.S. of A. and progressive, progressive and had Bernie Sanders on every week and all this jazz, right? I missed those days. I joined during the primary. As soon as I joined, suddenly, weeks later, it was Tom Hartman was saying stuff like, we have two wonderful candidates. And at one point, he even called Hillary Clinton um, a new FDR. Now, come on, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, yeah, don't know what went wrong there, but now he's basically, maybe he always was, and I just noticed it. That could always be, too. He's now, I'm now noticing he's a Democratic Party sheepdog, uh, shepherding people back to that party. Now, Mike Rivera, the reason why I was attracted to him, so to speak, was because he did not carry the water for either party. He was very anti-war. Um, yeah, anti-war on drugs. And he even had, you know, a thing or two, like he seems okay with social programs and stuff like that. So... <clears throat> certain ones anyway. So now, all of a sudden, he's just... Every day, it's something about those GD Confederate statues. Every day, or and flags and all that. Every day, we're hearing about how Antifa, Antifa, whatever, and Black Lives Matter uh, are hideous, hideous, hideous. No mention of the other side, so to speak, with the so-called Nazis, whatever they were called that day. I don't even know what they're called. Because I know it's all a psychological operation to keep us divided but still i mean yeah violence did break out i mean that's just because it's a psychological operation doesn't mean it's not unfolding at any rate you know so i kept dropping in stuff i mean greg palast has actual photos you might want to check that greg palast.com g-r-e-g-p-a-l-a-s-d.com has total photos and film of a black man being beaten to a pulp threatened and the cameraman actually had a gun pulled on him as he was taking the photos and filming it. And some of the pictures went national in newspapers and things. But we don't ever hear any mention of that. No mention of the so-called other side. So, you know, I've, I've had my say about the damn statues and the Confederate flag, whatever you want. I'm not going to even do it anymore. If you want to know more, you can go back into my videos and you'll see a title that kind of probably alludes to that. So, there are some problematic things over there, like, um, oh, another thing he claims that this whole deal with the racism is to um, make it so people are just uncomfortable voting GOP. They just don't want people voting GOP, so I put, nobody should vote GOP, and they shouldn't vote Dem either. Why is he defending either one of these corporate parties? I don't know. I just see him kind of going more right-wing now than I ever dreamed. I mean... He admits to being more kind of right, but, you know, he's not a neocon, that's for sure. He calls himself a paleo-conservative or something like that. I've been over that before as well. So I was just very glad to see John there today because, oh, you know, he just, he really livened things up and, you know, didn't let people get away with stuff. And, you know, this love for all things statue and Christopher Columbus was wonderful and, it's just crazy behavior, ladies and gentlemen. I do spend a lot of time trying to... I'm not saying I'm right about things, but I don't like the idea of anybody going along with everything a talk show host says, everything that a, a politician says, everything that a religion says. And these same people claim to be freedom, 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 and, you know, it's just, it's odd to me. Uh, I noticed this with Rush Limbaugh people. I mean, Rush Limbaugh is God. There's no getting around it. He's never told a lie, and he's right about everything. I mean, it it becomes like a cult-like following. 
I even noticed it with some alternative media online that people get, like that Randy Rhodes I was telling you about. I guess the moderators get mad if you say, not calling her name or anything, but saying, oh, I disagree with you on such and such. The Democrats are a corporate party or something. People get blocked. It's it really, we, I don't, I guess I do know what it is. I think it's because here in the United States of America, we've been raised, I've been over this before, but I do have new viewers. They probably don't want to root through my old videos all the time, but, um, and I need to organize those into playlists, I think. I might do that tonight. Anyhow, as I've said before, it's because when you're born here, you're actually surrounded by, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, religious people. We're a religious country, really. And, you know, from that, you get like a cult like following of an authoritarian type God. And you're just sort of taught this American exceptionalism and how the military is glorified and all that leads to following blindly without opening your mind to investigate. And that's what this John was saying on the chat today, that he was giving some critiques of Mike and stuff. And then he said he just wanted to challenge the chatters to get them to be open-minded, to not just say, oh, I agree, Mike, oh, you're wonderful, Mike, or whatever. And that's what I feel I do or I want to do over there, and I want to be fair. So that's when he starts in with this Antifa and BLM and how the paid protesters and George Soros and all this stuff. That might very well be true. But let's not let the Koch brothers off the hook. Let's not let the other side, I guess the white supremacy, I don't even know what they're calling themselves, the alt-right. Let's not let them off the hook either. I mean, he's almost painting a picture of, you know, these evil liberals being paid by Soros, but the conservatives were just happy go lucky and stumbled upon a protest or something it's suspicious to me ladies and gentlemen i don't care for it um at all but uh, you know i do like mike and i do respect him and like i said compared to corporate media he's head and shoulders above the rest and i didn't used to think that he had an agenda of protecting people or whatever but i might be changing my mind on that i will just give it time i want him to mention these things i want he knows of greg palast he totally knows of him because when I called in that day, he was nodding his head like, oh, yeah, old-fashioned detail. Like, he knows of him. And, you know, look at the pictures or look at the Best Democracy Money Can Buy trailer that I sent. Stuff like that. And I, I'm not going to understand this. I want somebody to explain it to me, please. Why, oh, why? Well, I think I might know why. But why, oh, why do people of a certain political persuasion or leaning that way tend to glorify or be madly in love with the losing side of the civil war and they want statues erected and people to have the flags and whatnot. I think it doesn't have much to do with racism. Don't faint. I think it has to do with, in their minds, the states, they left because of freedom, freedom. In fact, somebody said that today. Freedom, freedom. Well, I understand that, or more states' rights. But in this particular case, you have to ask yourself, states' rights to do what? To own other people, basically. I know I'm being very simplistic, and I've done other videos about it where I unpack it a little bit more. I don't want to be totally simplistic, but I don't have all night either. So I just think that a certain persuasion, uh, leaning a certain way, is... They glorify that because they see those southern states as heroic for standing up against a strong central government, which, by the way, the framers of the Constitution absolutely wanted a strong central government. Look it up, read the Federalist Papers, do whatever you have to do. I'm done. That's all. Just wanted to let you know how it's going tonight with Mike Rivero and the chat and um, everything. Lounging with Lisa, the video series that has me lounging while coming at you with thoughts of the day. Please join together with me. Drop your political identities. Drop labels for that you use yourself for yourself and labels that you give other people. Let's just see each other as people. Let's just see the... the um, I couldn't think of it. The hidden hand, the 1%, the corporations as the true enemy, the establishment. That's what I'm trying to say. It's people against corporations, people, real people, everyday people, no matter what you call yourself, against the establishment. Love you.